Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we've got a nice, uh, very nice session today. Um, we've got Robert here to tell us more about what's happened with Studio in the last just a couple of months, really, right, Robert? That's right. Things are moving pretty quickly. So this is a kind of a follow up to what Wim and I were doing earlier today. And I think Wim, you're going to do your, you're going to finish up that demo in a breakout after this session. Is that right? I am yeah. right after this one, and then uh, we'll record that one as well. Well, great. So is there anything I know we're going to we're going to do a demo here uh, via video just to make it make sure that we don't have any other complications that are going on. Is there anything you want to say to set up what's going to be played here in a minute? Yeah. Uh, first off, just hello, everyone. Uh, oh, yeah. Introduce yourself, too, would be a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Robert, uh, yeah. Who are you, Robert. Yeah, I'm Robert. Um, who am I? So I'm a product owner here at Claris. Um, most of you know me from years working on the FileMaker product side on the clients. Still heavily involved in that, but uh, these days I'm leading the effort on the uh, Claris Studio side. Um, first off, just Todd and Wim, uh, it was so awesome seeing you guys uh, live doing that, pulling all of it together. Uh, you, you nailed the vision. I mean, that's something that we talk about quite quite a bit internally, uh, providing the community this, this entire tool set uh, that, you know, with a combination of all the power that you got in Claris Pro and what we're seeing in Studio coming along and Connect. And uh, I loved, as you put it, uh, Todd, the, the safety hatches that, that are built in as well. Um, so that we have a tool set that you can feel confident that no matter what challenge you face, you're going to be able to say yes to it. Um, so that's super encouraging. And, and just as someone that's been working on this for a while, actually seeing it all come together was, was a sight to see. So well, thank thanks. you for that. Thanks. Um, I, I hope that folks were able to join that this morning because seeing Studio in a current state, being able to collect data, um, you know, we've already got some folks in our problem solver circle that have been kicking the tires, but uh, we also have people that have actually gone in and started replacing uh, third-party services they were using or things that they rolled their own with Studio. So that's super encouraging. What we want to do today is talk about sort of where we're going next with Studio. A, a few months ago, we actually had a presentation from Peter Nelson where he talked about, you know, what things we were focusing on heading into the fall. And I won't cover all of that again here. I highly encourage you to go check it out. It's up on our YouTube channel. It does cover some things I won't be talking specifically about today. Uh, but the core of it really focused around functionality and features for Studio that would help you elevate uh, access to data that you're already probably collecting in, in the FileMaker ecosystem. Right? You've got server or cloud that's acting as a hub. It's pulling data from Oracle or MySQL through ODBC or countless web services through either Connect or writing scripting directly. IoT devices are feeding data in, and now, of course, Clear Studio uh, collecting data from anonymous users. So that all gets put into server. You can use server-side scripting to process that data. Uh, but then when it gets to getting that data out to folks that, you know, they're not inside FileMaker Pro every day, right? But they need access to that data to make key insights to their businesses. So the CEOs, the VPs, um, folks that need to see the health of the business to, to make decisions. Um, and that's what I want to cover today is where some enhancements we're making to Studio uh, and the combination of it connected so tightly with the Claris Pro products uh, will help you do that. Uh, so as Todd mentions, we've we've done this as a recording. Typically, I like to do these uh, live, but the team's been making such uh, rapid iterations and improvements that uh, trying to do it live, uh, I didn't want to come in and have a new screen be there and uh, have to react to it on the fly. So we pre-recorded this, uh, but that means that now I can be in chat, try to answer questions as we go through it. Uh, so with that said, if we could kick off the video and then we'll go from there. Here we have an events app that we've built. Uh, it tracks information about the location, start and end date. We can see everyone that is registered for the events, what sessions they've signed up for, any to-do items that the team needs to do in preparation for it, anything that we need to purchase for the event, and then the results. Uh, these events are primarily to generate money for good causes, so we want to track the donations that are coming in. We'll also send out a survey so people can provide feedback, and through those comments, we'll take and pass them through an ML model to understand you know, which customers are angry or upset so that we can focus our energy on following up with those customers and improve future event, uh, events so that we can hopefully increase the number of donations we receive. So on the surface, this looks like a pretty typical Claris Pro app that you're used to. But if we drill under the hood, we can see that actually the bulk of these tables are stored in Claris Studio. And to the end user, this is something that they don't really need to notice. Now, the ability to see Claris Studio data in Claris Pro is something that we have in market today. We saw that earlier from the session with Todd and Wim. 
But with this version, we've made some enhancements so that now not only can you read the data, but you can update the data, delete it, and even create new records. So let's take a look at a practical example. We've got someone that has signed up for an upcoming session. They've contacted us and told us, hey, I'm not receiving the emails that you promised. Can I validate my email address? So we go in here and we can see that uh, Gary's email address is actually incorrect. They typed in slapping the base and it should be slapping the base. So we can go in here, make this change. And then if I bring up Safari, we can see our spreadsheet view here. And we have the uh, old record information. But if I refresh this page, when it comes back up, we'll see that this record has been updated for uh, Gary to say slap and debase. Now, this is an example of updating it through Claris Pro. Uh, but the ability to not only access Claris Studio data, but also update it, delete it, and create records uh, will also be available through Claris Server, Claris Cloud, and course, Claris Go running on iOS. So that's through any of our clients or any of our services like uh, server-side scripting or data API, you'll be able to go and interact with this data stored in Studio. Again, so that this experience is seamless, whether you're interacting with it uh, through one of our native clients or through the web browser. Now, while we're in the web browser, I want to take a few moments and take a tour of this spreadsheet view. Again, we have a spreadsheet view in Claris Studio today in market. Um, but for those that have already played with it or maybe been paying close attention to the demos we've done, you'll notice that this is actually pretty different than what you've seen in the product today. Uh, one big notice is that this is a standalone sheet. Uh, it doesn't have any of the app chrome along the top. Um, the visuals of it, we've done a lot of uh, cleanup from the styling, sort of the interactions, fine tuning the experience, adding things like a quick form view so that you can uh, look at your data in a form instead of through the spreadsheet view. And those are all nice sort of quality of life improvements. But we've also added some real powerful you know, ways to quickly get insights into your data. Uh, so, for example, let's say the age, we wanted to get an idea of the average age coming to the event. I could quickly do that here. Or maybe I want to see how many unique uh, different industries we have people visiting from. So with just a couple of clicks, I can very quickly gain those insights from this data. So that's useful, uh, but there's also kind there's also times where I need something that's a little bit more visual. Say, for example, I want to see uh, how my different session signups are, are going. I can come in here and select chart by, and we automatically generate a chart for you. Uh, this works as a bar chart, but we could actually do this maybe a little bit better with a pie chart. And I can see here that um, Brad's karaoke session is um, not getting a whole lot of love. So maybe that's something we need to look into better promoting or, or maybe getting someone else to headline it. So that's a, a quick tour of the um, the spreadsheet view. And that's just one of multiple views that we've been working on. What I'd like to do before touring those, though, is actually come back to Claris Pro and anchor us a little bit here. So we've taken a look now at this registration data. And as I'm sure you can imagine, that's being collected by uh, the uh, data collection forms that we already have in Claris Studio in market today. But here we also have to do and purchase requests. Um, with to do, you know, we absolutely can go in here, drill in down a level, change the statuses as we're making changes. Uh, likewise, we can do the same as we're doing purchase request approvals. Um, but really, in both of these cases, the person that's actually, in the case of to do, doing the actual work uh, on an ongoing basis, or the person that's going to do the purchase request approvals, like they really don't need everything else that's in this app. They really just need to be looking at the to-do in that moment or coming into a site to um, go and approve requests as they're coming in. And they don't need all the complexity of going and installing a copy of Claris Pro and managing and updates and then going into the actual app and drilling into this specific event for this specific uh, uh, tab within this layout. Um, all those are just really friction points in, in people trying to get to uh, the important data that they need to do their jobs. So let's keep that problem in mind and now come back to Clara Studio, where one of the first things that you'll see uh, that's, that really stands out is that 
we've really changed the UI quite a bit here. Um, you're used to in the in the product today, you can create multiple forms, but per form, it's it's really just that one set of pages. And what we're changing this to is so that you can actually create multiple different view types. You you've seen now the the registration uh, form that we did for a spreadsheet, uh, but now I'd like to show you a couple of additional ones. Here we have uh, the spreadsheet that represents the data that's coming from uh, our to-do section here. And what I can do is just simply come in here and create a new view. And to manage to-dos, a Kanban view is super helpful. So what this is doing is creating a new view based on that spreadsheet. Uh, we'll need to pick a field to uh, create the essentially the swim lanes for this Kanban board. And there we go. Uh, it's grabbed that data that uh, you saw in Claris Pro. And uh, I can come in here and quickly make some changes to my progress, right? So the um, preparation is actually done. Uh, we're doing the presentation now. And I can just drag and drop these elements around, and they automatically update. Now, on the uh, customization side, you can go in and make changes to these cards. So you can show different field data in different sections, change out or hide this image. You can also customize the stacks. Um, so you can come in here and add stacks before or after. You can rename them. You can create records directly from them. You can also go in and hide them to get them to a point where they work best for your particular use case. So that's a, a Kanban view. Uh, that's something that uh, you can have in your list of views. You can also then go share that out to your team members. Another view I want to talk about, though, is a list detail, which works well for us doing that purchase approval. Here we've got a page uh, that functions very similar to the uh, the data collection form. You know, we've got functionality like being able to drag and drop elements around on the page. Things automatically resize and remove as needed. Uh, with the list detail, there's a couple of key differences here. One is that uh, we automatically give you this section, this uh, list of records that when the user clicks on, will navigate them between the different records. And if we have to actually drill down into uh, the sort of consumption view of this, we can see this in action. Uh, so as I click through these records, I can see uh, the statuses of each of them. Uh, this one for Brad's auto-tune, uh, I don't know if he needs that. We'll, we'll deny that, have him use his own beautiful voice, uh, and uh, I'm sure that will bring the donations in. So you can see here, just clicking through the records, uh, making that change, unlike the submission form, I don't have to hit a submit button. We make these uh, data changes automatically immediately when you go and update the records, much like you're used to in Claris today. Claris Pro, I should say, today. One other thing that I want to call out here is something that we're doing around the responsive design. You've seen parts of that with the uh, existing forms that we created, whereas you shrink the page down, uh, columns will start to stack. Uh, but in a list detail, that really only works to a certain point. Uh, and then you need to shrink down and separate those two views. So I now have my list, uh, my list here. And when I click on one of these, uh, it will drill me down into the detail and I can then navigate back automatically. All right, so right out of the box, uh, these things will work well, these pages, I should say, will work well whether you're on an iPhone or I should say a, a phone device, a tablet or a desktop. So one of the key things that I want you to take away from these additional views is again, thinking back to that problem of folks that, um, you know, they're they could go into Pro and make these changes to the to the records here, um, but oftentimes it, there's just a lot of friction uh, getting them to those those bits of data, and so this is where these additional views can be really helpful. Uh, to, to further that, I, I, there's one more view type that I want to talk about, and that is the ability to surface data that you've got spread out across your organization to be able to get key insights from them quickly, and that's dashboards. So let's come actually back to our, um, our Claris Pro app again here. We're going to go over to the, res the results. We're going to imagine that this event has happened. It was a great success. And we're starting now to get information about the donations people are submitting and the uh, summaries of, or I'm sorry, the um, submissions they're making on feedback and sort of how they're feeling about the event. Now that two bits of data are actually going to be coming from 
uh, two places. The donations are being handled by a third party where they're actually doing the processing of the uh, money that's being gathered. And then the survey responses, they are being collected by Clara Studio, but then we're passing that to a um, third party service to give us insights on the sentiment of the comments. Now, typically this would be run off of our server using server-side scripting. Uh, maybe we pass that or run that every hour or every 24 hours, depending on how often you want that to be updated. But in this case, we'll just run this manually um, through the menu. Again, it's gonna go out and fetch that information for me. All of this data is getting fed into a Claris Studio table. So even though Claris Pro or more specifically Claris Server is the one going out and grabbing that data and pulling it together and representing it in Claris Pro, that is also then accessible to me in uh, Claris Studio. So now what I can do is uh, I've got this results table. I can go in and create a new view, oops, a new dashboard view. And just like the Kanban view, we go and create, we look at the data that you already have on there and we try to make some um, uh, educated guesses. So you can see we've got some charts already created for me that I can now go and customize. So it sees, we can see here we've got uh, 37 donations that have come in, uh, but I also want to see how many, uh, or I should say how much of that is coming in, uh, or I should say how much we've raised in our donations. Uh, so here we've got that, uh, we can say money raised. And I click out of there, we've got that, that's awesome. Now let's come down and customize these charts a little bit. Some important information that I wanna know about the event would be things like, well, one, what are those sentiments? How are people feeling about it? So let's go ahead and customize this. And instead of donations, we wanna track feelings. And that looks pretty good, but we can see here that we've actually got uh, some empty records, people that didn't fill that specific field out. We can go in and filter this. So let's say feeling is not empty. That chart looks pretty good. And then instead of, what is this showing me now? Okay, this is also showing me feeling. Let's uh, change this one actually to uh, the session breakdown that we saw that earlier. Let's also do that as a pie chart. And then for this final chart, um, it actually looks pretty good. The only thing I wanna change again is getting rid of the empty data. Uh, so this was donations, it was not empty. And we can see sort of how we were tracking against our donation goals. And then just like the other views that we've shared uh, or I've, I've demonstrated, we can then go share this with your team. Anyone that has a Claris Studio account can come in and view this data and not have to worry about going in through the Claris Pro platform. So it gives them access to that data, allows you to surface all that great data that you are collecting through the Claris platform uh, much more easily through a web browser. So those are some of the enhancements that we've made progress on so far. Um, and I wanna end on, on one last piece that wasn't something that we've really set out to uh, tackle specifically just yet, uh, but it gives you a preview of how these ingredients are starting to come together to create some really interesting integration between Claris Pro and Studio. Now those views um, that you just saw, actually let me bring that back up again. We had our studio view here with the uh, spreadsheet. Uh, and again, I called out earlier, there's, there's no app Chrome, there's no studio app Chrome here. There's a URL though, and Claris Pro, of course, as you all know, has the ability to render URLs in a web viewer. And because you are logged in at the app level with your Claris Studio ID, and it's of course then logged in at the web viewer as well, you can do something interesting. So he here we've got our registration and we're currently looking at a portal. Um, but I could swap that out with that Clear Studio view, that slide, that spreadsheet rather, in a web viewer directly inside of Claris Pro. Um, and it kind of just works. Um, again, we're seeing all the same records. We've got one data source, we've got one unified auth. Um, and so these two products working in tandem together uh, becomes pretty seamless. Now there's absolutely some additional optimizations we wanna do in the future as we see how folks are using this. Um, but I thought this was a really cool way to, to see how these can complement, each product can complement each other's strengths. 
Um, right here, I've got something that we've all looked for for a long time, horizontally scrolling. I can reorganize these, these uh, columns. Um, and any changes that I make to the data here will be reflected in other areas in Claris Pro where that maybe that data is represented with traditional layouts. So that is what I wanted to share on the progress we've made so far with Studio. There's still more coming, and I'll turn it back over to the live version of me now. Awesome. Uh, that was fun uh, watching the chat go by, interesting sort of sitting uh, in the audience. Mm -hmm. um, so as mentioned, uh, you know, this isn't everything. This is just an update of where the engineering team is now. We've got some more that we discussed. Uh, one I want to touch on is uh, the idea of hubs. Uh, so being able to take those views and easily share those then with individuals or team members uh, to go solve a specific challenge, right? So maybe you got purchase requests you need to process. You could throw in the views that is the form and the, the actual list detail and whatever else they need to be successful there. Um, and you know, the idea of hubs is very similar to an app. It's just that with apps, you've got the schema and the layouts uh, sort of locked in that app. And we all know how fun it is to try to reuse those elements in other, in other apps. Uh, with views and hubs, you can place those views in any combination of hubs and make it really easy to share out. Um, we've only got a couple of minutes. I wanted to address uh, a couple of additional things that we're, we're looking at, uh, as well as uh, top questions. Um, things that I didn't talk about here that we've, uh, we're have we working on, I know there's been a lot of questions around things like attachment support for forms, uh, being able to create some basic relationships directly in Studio. Um, and one of the other things that we're looking at, you know, we've talked about having these um, Studio tables brought into Claris Pro, but well, there's going to be plenty of use cases where we need to go the other way. You may already have a Draco table that has some data in it. Um, and you want to start feeding new data into that. Well, uh, we're working on the ability to actually migrate those tables uh, as needed. Um, we're going to start off iteratively with uh, tables that have just text, uh, number, and I think timestamp. Uh, but it would then create that schema on the studio side, move all of your data over, and then swap it out behind the scenes. So mm. again, that's that seamless experience. A um, couple of things I wanted to address, though, that I know we've been getting uh, a number of questions around. And the first is the whole, why are we doing FileMaker and Claris Pro? Why not just do it as one product? Uh, and that really boils down to um, one of our actual North Stars that the engineering team is operating against, which is that we don't break existing solutions. Um, if we were to make these changes and we're trying to tightly couple Claris Pro to uh, Studio, uh, we would be breaking things. Um, to give you an example of that, you know, in order for us to have that tight integration that you were seeing there in that demo uh, between Studio and Pro, and, and to address some of the issues Todd, uh, you guys ran into earlier today, we're going to have the files themselves uh, authenticate using Clear Studio ID, um, which means that we won't have things like uh, local accounts and an Active Directory on day one. Uh, we totally understand the importance of those things, um, and we may not bring them exactly back as we have them today, uh, but things like uh, local accounts enabling offline support for when you're out in the field. Like we need to solve for those challenges. Um, so if you're someone that uh, rely on those uh, capabilities, uh, we're still going to be giving you Claris 19. When you buy into the Problem Solver Circle, you would get both 19 and Claris Pro. Um, and that means that if you're staying on 19, you're still getting bug fixing, you're still getting other updates and enhancements, all of which will be on the Claris Pro side of things as well. Uh, but you'll get Claris Pro and the Studio connection so that you can start in your development environment you know, playing with it, learning um, its uh, behaviors. And then once you're ready, you can then make that switch over. Um, the second thing I wanted to address, uh, we saw this in the in the earlier session today as well, some con uh, concerns around skills that we need to learn. Um, uh, Mongo specifically came up, but, you know, as we were talking about the technologies we were using to build this platform, uh, you know, that was really the intent of showing, hey, look, these are robust, proven uh, technologies, uh, especially when, when you're talking to your IT departments. Um, but that's not something that you need to go and learn, much like you didn't need to go and learn Objective-C or C++ when we built Pro. Um, so understanding that those technologies are there, as you saw from that demo, that's not something that you'll need to learn. Um, that's not to say in the future, uh, I understand the want. Uh, there's uh, hooks that we could go in and add, much like those safety valves we've talked about in the past. Uh, or, or earlier today, those things could come. But for the core functionality, and I hope that you saw that there, um, this is really the continuation of the spirit of what Claris has always been, which is lowering the bar so that more people can express their creativity and solve challenges for an organization. Um, I think we're just about out of time. Is that correct, folks? Pretty close. Um, 
So I mean, we can go a little long. If there's anything else you, you want to say? Uh, I want, yeah, if I could just a, a quick, a just real world example I wanted to walk through um, just to really hammer that point home. Uh, internally, I, I still do quite a bit of development with the platform. Uh, we had a request uh, for, um, on the service, something pretty simple. Uh, we needed to have a collection of questions that were coming in from employees. So we had a uh, requirement to have just a few fields, you know, who they are, what they're asking, a couple required, uh, a couple of those fields would be required. Uh, we wanted to look good, professional, work across different devices. Um, again, on the surface, pretty straightforward. Um, I've been doing development for quite a while, so that seemed like something I could do in my sleep. Um, but actually sitting down and doing it, uh, admitting I'm a bit OCD, so making sure everything's pixel polished perfectly uh, took some time. Uh, but the whole thing took a uh, little under an hour. Um, as soon as we had a version of Studio that could satisfy those same better requirements, uh, we rebuilt it. Um, and I have to say with better results because of you know things like autofill and uh, sort of the uh, automatic resizing that, that you saw in studio so far. Uh, and it took me under five minutes. Yeah. Uh, and that was striking for a couple of reasons. One, not only do I get all that time back, uh, which is valuable, that's, that's an hour I could be spending with one of you all talking about your business and better understanding it. Um, it also meant that I wasn't doing the heavy context switch that you would normally do. Like I've got a day job, like all of you do coming in and, and, and building that I had to focus. I had to think about what I was doing, went through all the same troubleshooting that you guys went through earlier. Um, so when, even once I was done, I had to spend some time ramping back up to the rest of my job, the rest of my day. Uh, but when I built it in studio, what really struck me is I didn't have to think through the experience. Like it, it felt more like a, quick response to a Slack message or an email uh, versus a completely change, you know, uh, mindsets. Um, and that's super valuable to me again, as a developer, but as this, uh, as Studio continues to evolve and we start opening this up so that other people in the organization can start, uh, you know, building their own uh, views on top of the data that we're collecting, um, that's again going to free us up as developers to not be bogged down by those things that we've all done hundreds of times that are easy but time consuming and really focus on the real challenges that are facing the business, which I, I'm the most excited about. So, so thanks for letting me go a couple of minutes over. Um, we are going to be doing at the uh, Claris booth an AMA. Come hang out with me. We'll be answering questions around Studio, around FileMaker. Um, I hope that you all uh, come and join us. Um, but with that said, uh, thanks again, guys, for for letting us come in and, and uh, share what we've been working on. Uh, it was a lot of fun, again, watching the comments come in. And uh, I look forward to um, uh, continuing this conversation. Great. Great, Good Robert. Stuff. Thanks so much. Just quickly as we roll out here, um, that's an impressive amount of progress and um, really, the really something to see where how things are headed. And um, just great. Really wow. impressive. Huge kudos to the engineering teams. It has been a blast. Uh, and, and seeing the progress that they're making week to week has just been phenomenal. Yeah. So we're continuing this theme of, of being able to get farther with less sort of um, context switching is a big part of it. Having to mm -hmm. switch to another, learn an API or learn a front end framework or do those things. We're going to be able to do more things that we need to do without having to undertake that. Absolutely. And and just quickly, just one point that I think we're not making enough. There's all these things that you inherit automatically, like the resizing that you yeah. do, Robert, on, on these things. Like you never have to think about this anymore, right? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. just there. Um, so good stuff. Awesome. Yep. W one last thing. If you can come by the Claris booth and uh, click the sign up to learn more, that way we can stay in touch. Uh, and so as we're having updates to Studio and to the platform as a whole, that, that you get those, uh, those emails. It's great. I think we're about out of time. So thanks, everybody. All right. Awesome. Thanks.